Welcome back to Between Bells, everybody. We all delayed our travel plan to 2021 due to COVID, but now the Delta variant is making a lot of us reconsider our vacations altogether. Still, at the very same time, rules about international travel are being relaxed more than ever. For the latest on the state of the travel industry, we're going to chat our new senior reporter, Michelle Castillo. She's live at the Skift Global Forum at the TWA Hotel in New York. Michelle, take it away. Thanks, Hannah. I'm actually here today with Rafat Ali. He's the CEO of travel media company Skift. So thanks so much for joining us. Of course, thank you. You know, we saw a boom in travel in 2021, especially during the summer, but we're starting to see a decline, especially as it enters fall and winter. What are your predictions for the rest of 2021 when it comes to travel? Yeah, certainly Delta variant hit us a lot and um, July was great. August was where a lot of the companies saw the pause. I think we're at a stage where the concerns are beginning to plateau out. If you hear from the CEOs here speaking at our conference, uh, they're beginning to see the uptick again. And the news that came two days ago, which is the U.S. is going to reopen to anybody in the world who's vaccinated, is a huge boost. So I think we're at the end of this whole period. Um, hopefully, obviously, predictions are bad to say these days because anything could change. But I think that people are getting used to it. And I think we're factoring in the Delta variant. People, especially as the vaccine mandates come in, as companies start coming back, I know they were going to come back after Labor Day. It didn't happen. I think it's going to happen in the next few months, certainly by January. And I think so we're going to see uptick. So fall may be still a little um, uncertain. Business travel is a whole different story. We can, I'm sure, talk about that as well. But business travel, I think, uh, will be in uncertainty. Leisure travel that's leading, leading the industry, leading the demand will continue to happen. So yesterday you spoke to Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky. He thought that the pandemic has forever changed travel in terms of flexibility. I'll let our viewers take a listen. Before the pandemic, we used to live in one place. We called that our house. We went to another place to work, called that the office, and we traveled to a third place. And what the pandemic did is it forced us all to do all three activities in one place. And that place could, with Zoom, a new technology that didn't exist 10 or 20 years ago, suddenly be anywhere. So this revolution really is about flexibility. Suddenly, you can live anywhere, you can work anywhere. How else is flexibility being reflected in the travel industry? I think in terms of booking patterns, for instance, a lot of companies, the airlines, etc., had flexible booking dates as in you can book, but you will get the full refund back. I think you'll continue to see that happen, uh, particularly as international comes back, just because those are big ticket items in general. And what's also happening is, is, is people booking multiple trips and making sure that, okay, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to go here. So trip stacking is a term that's people are using now, which is you as a, as a family is booking three trips and figure out which one to go to and then cancel the others as well. So I think flexibility is going to be huge in terms of how travel companies spur demand and then put consumer confidence back into people. How else has the pandemic changed how we're going to travel in the future? Well, so one of the things that's happened is this boom in domestic travel. So you going within two to three hours of your of you know wherever you're living. So I do think that domestic travel, which really needed a renaissance because domestic travel supports so many small businesses in general, all across the world, not just in the US. And so certainly that's happened. Uh, international long haul travel, I think we're going to see a lot less of it for a while to come, like from here to Singapore. It's tough to justified, particularly for business travel. So I think we'll see that. Um, I think Luxury End is doing well. Short-term rentals, Airbnb, we talked about is doing very well as a company. People have said that they want alternative types of accommodations in addition to this beautiful hotel we're here at. Um, outdoor, outdoor as a sector, which is people wanting to go out in nature. We've seen that in the real estate, people going out, moving out of the cities, wanting to buy um, places with that is more space. And certainly we're seeing that in travel as well. So final question before we go, um, just real quick, I know you did a study with McKinsey that um, said that we are going to, about how to get travelers back. What's your one piece of advice to get travelers back if you're a business? Well, I think uh, being in front of them is important. So marketing, I know a lot of companies have pulled back on marketing, um, but I do think that getting in front of the consumers, people are now, dream like one of the things that's happened is con um, travel as a human need certainly has been shown in the last year. People want connections. So and until you keep, unless you keep reminding them that you're there, in addition to the 20 other brands, you won't be part of the set. We're going to have to leave it there today. So that was Rafa Ali, CEO of Skift. Back to you. Michelle, thank you so much. And thanks to Rafa Ali, CEO and founder of Skift. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle.